Hey guys, this is Kyle and Travis again with Beyond Bipolar Blog. So I wanted to react to another uh, Healthy Gamer GG or Dr. K's video about probably one of the most primary really issues with those suffering from mental health issues. And I truly believe that at least 80 to 90 percent of people's problems of why they feel like crap or why they're experiencing mental health issues such as depression, anxiety, etc. or just mainly just feeling not very great is primarily with sleep. And if you're not getting good sleep, I pretty much guarantee it. That's probably primarily the number one symptom that I would like to, for me, if I was talking to people and when I do, I ask about how has been their sleep. Now, I feel like sleep is kind of a, seen as a luxury and most people don't take it as seriously but to me when you suffer head pass issues of mental health issues and like my brother I really do think sleep is almost uh 90 percent uh related to uh your mental health and how well of sleep you are getting so I wanted to watch this Deegan sleep schedule I don't know what Deegan means but I assume it's just a really bad a person that can't sleep or has a really bad sleep issues so like my brother and I had and like many mentally ill or people with mental disorders I really feel like a lot of people suffer from sleep issues and they suffer from insomnia and I think that's a primarily difficult thing to deal with with primarily in a lot of societies especially American societies or or the more of the first world of the third the first world kind of countries so i used to have severe sleep issues and we'll discuss about some of the meds along with my brother and he'll discuss what helps him sleep but we'll watch his video and see what he has to say okay let's get going how much do you think sleep schedule impacts mental health huge so if you look at sleep Sleep is the one symptom that I think is impacted by every single mental health diagnosis, for the most part, if I'm remembering that correctly. So I remember looking at, you know, sort of like each mental, it's the most common element, if, if not every single one, it is the most common sleep disturbance is the symptom that is the most common across all mental illnesses. So the way that I understand that is like sleep is the time that your mind and brain use to like repair itself or heal. And so when your sleep is impaired, your healing function is impaired. And so it propagates mental illness. Do you tell your patients to sleep? Generally speaking, that is not something I say to them. I don't say to them sleep. What I will do is ask them how their sleep is and I will try to help them sleep healthier. Because exactly like people are saying, just sleep doesn't work. Okay, so here's a couple tips on sleep. Three quick tips. First of all, if you want to control your sleep schedule, it's not about bedtime. It's about waking up time. It is far easier, well, I'm not saying it's easier, it's far easier to wake up when you're tired than it is to go to sleep when you're not. So if you're trying to control your sleep schedule, you're in for 48 to 72 hours of rough wake up. Okay? So I'd say that what y'all should do is set an alarm Set it loud and set it outside of hand reach. Ideally, like outside your door with the door open. Awesome. You have to get up and physically get out of bed. You know, he's given us tips on how to sleep. But when it comes to bipolar, I still feel like it's one of the most difficult things to do, especially when you're through a, especially when you're through a manic phase or through a depressive phase. Manic, you want to be awake all the time and. It's really easy to get up and stay awake, but when you're depressed, it's really, really hard to get up. Bonus points, if you can splash your face with a little bit of water, it'll help you make up, wake up. By all means, if you guys drink caffeine, do that. Mm. Control your weight. That's very interesting that he uh, uh, thinks caffeine is okay, and I'll be super honest. We never were huge ca uh, caffeine or coffee drinkers, and I want to point out, please don't drink pop. I really think that should be cut out, i.e. soda. That needs to be cut out of the diet because that stuff's really bad for you because of the high sugar. But I'm actually a pretty huge proponent of coffee. I think coffee really helps. It helps me to wake up. I mean, generally, I do wake up not feeling great sometimes. But when I drink my cup of coffee, I mean, it tastes good. 
and you end up feeling uh, better after it. So I, I actually like the fact that he uh, says coffee is actually an okay thing. Waking up in order to control your sleep. But I just go back. So that, that's where like, yeah, so you have to learn how to not do that, right? So notice that you just want to go back. And then as you're going back to bed, ask yourself, do I want to switch, uh, uh, fix my sleep schedule? If the answer to that question is yes, you can't, well, not do I want to. What matters to me more, fixing my sleep schedule or going back to bed now? Try to ask yourself that question. That's hard to, to point out because for me, I generally found like I don't like waking up early. I hate it, even though that's society's kind of way, way is the nine to five or eight to eight to four. But it's so much know. easier. I don't, I don't have it's so much easier to wake seriously. up late and go to bed later yes. than try to wake up early and, there, and go to sleep early. And there are reasons why I like waking up late is and going to bed later because I don't like wanting to do stuff around the house right away. But most importantly, when everyone's asleep, including my brother and my dad, I'm not distracted. I'm not told what to do, and I can just focus on my on my uh, creative pursuits, such as video editing. Uh, illustrations so that's why i like it it's, it's the me time so second thought is screen time and blue light inhibit melatonin production so ideally two hours before you try to fall asleep you want no access to screens so physiologically it's going to be easier to sleep because your melatonin will start pumping and then you'll it'll like physiologically literally be easier you know i wanted to mention that with mental health it's such a difficult thing to treat because you can't really physically see it and i was kind of and you think after learning all about the mental health diagnosis that we learned in school that they'd be able to figure out something supposedly my brother and i actually did do a little bit of uh, research volunteering we actually went into uh, the U of M and got MRI brain scans. They checked your fingernails. I, I remember if they could figure out what causes bipolar, what causes schizophrenia. I mean, what causes like anything. The problem is it's in the mind and you can't see it. And I feel like because you can't see it, it's really hard to figure out. And the interesting thing is he's talking about melatonin. That's a really common thing with sleep. Melatonin is basically... The one that actually wires you down and makes you go to sleep. And I know there's a lot of people that take melatonin and they consider it the natural method. But for me, I'm not sure if it works. And apparently people can supposedly get addicted to it uh, like anything. So it's interesting. So let's see what he has to say about this more. And for us, I don't know if it really worked for me in the past. Maybe it worked for Travis or he tried it all or what you mean? The melatonin. It used to work, actually. Oh, it did the, used to work. The problem yeah. is is that it makes you really drowsy when you wake up. And so you do feel effects on it. I do. Even if the, it's natural. The problem is is when you get off it, it's much harder to sleep. And You're it's addicted. similar to it's it's similar to taking Ativan. I used to take Ativan, and I tell you, Visceral, just to calm my nerves down. It works wonders, but when you try to get off it, it's, it's painfully difficult to try to sleep. So I try to go without it, and I haven't been on Ativan nightly for a very long time. So another just thing because my nerves aren't as agitated as before. Another thing I wanted to mention is I know that he feels like you have to wake up in order to fix it. Maybe he thinks it is possible to fix it, the natural method. But boy, I think it's extremely, extremely difficult because when I was working at Wells Fargo, I was stressed. I hated that job. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. And I probably just overreacted more than I should have. But anyway, when I was working there, I think a lot of my sleep is actually due to insomnia so there's a reason why i prefer waking up later because if i feel like if i'm anxious and i can't sleep well screw it then i get to sleep in and then i feel fine and i can function at a job so there's another reason why uh i feel like the second shift is better and i wanted to also mention that there's actually research uh that they're stating that some people are night people and some people are morning people so i feel like society has an issue where they want people to feel like that the early bird gets a worm. But I feel like if you just get the job done, who cares? I mean, maybe it has to do with evolution too, because everything's bright out in the day and people can get stuff done in the day. But 
now that we have technology, I don't think it really matters as much, unfortunately, but most people's society follows the eight to five schedule, unfortunately. So, and that's been difficult, which is something to, to change. There exist second shift jobs and there, it has worked a little bit with me, but let's continue and see what he else has to say. You're to sleep. Third thing is a bedtime routine is very, very helpful for sleep. So you can train your body and your mind to fall asleep at a particular time, like in a very Pavlovian way. Two hours, but I'm addicted. Yeah, it's hard, dude. Not going to lie. So that's why there's a reason I started with number one first. Because if you're tired enough, despite, so what we want to do, so getting a good sleep schedule is all about harnessing the power of fatigue. So that's what I recommend, especially to gamers. So we're not going to like, we're going to use fatigue as our gravity to fall asleep. So the more you can increase your fatigue, the easier it will be to get on a good sleep schedule. You can read a book. Absolutely. You just don't want blue wavelength of light. See, my problem with that, he's going exactly for the natural method. And I'm kind of surprised he's not been giving uh, like medicine to do that because boy, when you're bipolar or when you have issues like that and you keep on forcing yourself to get up you're gonna end up feeling more tired and more like crap and that increases your bipolar so i'm not sure if the natural method is the best way i know there's a lot of people that think they can but i don't know we'll see so audiobook is good book is good you know exercise if you guys feel like it stretch do yoga all that stuff is fantastic I think e-ink is actually okay. So he's purposely doing that because in psychology, if you're not a psychopath or if you have empathy, when you other people yawn, supposedly uh, more people will get tired. So he purposely did that, and he did that for one of the Vedas to test someone if he's truly a psychopath. So yawn. <laughs> so it's funny that you guys mentioned this because, like, literally today, I'm I'm starting the process of resetting my sleep schedule. So I woke up this morning about three hours earlier than I usually do. Wow. Um, so I'm resetting my sleep schedule as we speak. So now I'm already tired. I'm going to be ready for bed in like four hours. I have, I have recently enrolled in school. Yes, that is correct. So I don't know. Friends would walk up to me and be like, kind of a flaw thing. Is in your I feel like the medicine route when it comes to bipolar is extremely essential when it comes to getting the proper sleep because the antipsychotics definitely knock you out. And, you know, my brother's actually on trazodone, but the problem is when you're bipolar, it is an antidepressant and it worked for the first day, but then after a while it doesn't work. So antipsychotics do tire you out and they wear you out during the day as well. But the problem is, is that it does, if you're having issues with too much somnolence, it does uh, work less effectively over time and that would actually benefit you so you don't feel like you need to get all the sleep that you really sh should not need to so my brother wanted me to talk about my meds and sleep so this is i found this a perfect video to talk about i mean i'm on a, a pretty uh low dosage and low uh, meds i'm only take really like two so anyway i take a fish oil which mainly is just for uh mental wellness it's natural, and this is sertraline. Sertraline is my antidepressant. It's 25 mg, and then this is the big deal. This one uh, that I like the most is trazodone. This this little baby changed my life. This actually forces me to sleep, and not I don't have to do that candy ass method where I'm just insomnia and I can't sleep, and then force myself to wake and I continue to lose sleep and lose sleep. And then I end up getting, uh, having mental and it doesn't, health issues. It doesn't help so, if you work early in the morning because yeah. that light triggers everything and you don't get any sleep because the light wakes you up and it keeps you awake. But then when you try to fall asleep, it makes things worse. So I take 25 MG. This changed my life. And sometimes I actually double the dosage when I actually have to wake up earlier. And for me, it actually works if I just eat a little bit of food. So Trazodone MG, I recommend this. Yes, you sometimes get a hangover. Yes, sometimes you feel like crap when you get in the morning. But hey, I'd rather feel like crap in the morning and get enough sleep. And then once I just wake up, have my cup of coffee, and then I'm fine. But this this is actually what had me uh, be not become disabled as much. And I can actually hold a, a job and work. 
Uh, now I just rather just find jobs that work with me. Uh, I feel like second shift just works with me. I mean, wh why force it if it doesn't work for me? Like I said, I feel like I know that there's research that there's genetic studies that that some people are morning shifters and some people are uh, late night people and and sometimes their brain works better during the, the morning or the night and they do say that people at night are more a little are more smarter so I don't know uh, what can you describe all your meds and of all these meds which helps you actually sleep well to be honest with you I don't really it, I guess the most beneficial one is Latuda show them. I think I Latuda is. is I take Latuda at night 120 milligrams the highest dose it does help knock me out. I mean, I might be out for an hour to two hours, but it's enough to put me to sleep. And then I'm also on 150 milligrams of Lamictal, 300 milligrams total at night. And the reason why I take these at night is because they do promote sleep Those and make you all lethargic. Those are antipsychotics or what no, else? One, one is Lamictal is the mood stabilizer. The two is the antipsychotic. The problem with a lot of antipsychotics is that they do make you drowsy, but there are some that do not promote sleep when i was on lithium it really really knocked me out at night and i would just be sleeping way too long and i know when to sleep is because i just get so fatigued and my mood kind of changes i don't feel that great but regarding other medications i have tried i have tried like uh lunesta and there's another one that i can't really think of right now lunesta is a sleeping aid or sleeping pill and those don't necessarily work that well i felt there's more benefit because they make you so groggy during the day that you end up oversleeping. And being an antipsychotic plus Lunesta or a sleeping pill, that makes things a lot worse. And you sleep instead of 12 hours, maybe 16 hours tops. And that, that makes you think horrible. And that makes you feel much more horrible than if you were just on antipsychotic alone. Interestingly enough, uh, I wanted to mention something about Trazodone. That Trazodone is actually considered an antidepressant. In a way, uh, even though I'm on antidepressant, but I wanted to mention that because did the doctors, since you're, okay, so people with bipolar, uh, they're more afraid to put them on antidepressants because they actually could put them in a manic phase and they don't want that. So that's why his past you gotta doctors take did not want to put them on antidepressant, but you took trazodone and, and it didn't work for you. It made you more awake. Or yeah, it made me more awake. It, first day, like I said before, it it knocked me out, but the second day and third day, it just wouldn't work. So I felt because it's an antidepressant, that's the reason why it didn't help me. I got to have to mention, guys, I'm also on Zimbalt. I take that during the day, but sometimes if I miss that dose that day, I end up being awake more at night. So there is some benefit to taking your medications routinely because when I take it routinely, it does help knock me out. Another drug that I used to take for sleep primarily Besides, when I was on lithium and and um, lithium, Latuda, I was also on another drug Latuda. called Doxepin. Doxepin is another old antidepressant that really is used to help knock you out at night. For people with mental illnesses, especially bipolar, the three drugs that I want you to consider. One is antipsychotic like Latuda, must take with food. The second drug is a mood stabilizer if you need it like lithium really does help you get to sleep but it does cause cause weight gain and three is doxepin or any other type of old-fashioned like trazodone might work for you i know a few people with bipolar disorder that does take that that do take that i wanted to mention something before i had to cut tras a little bit off because with bipolar uh, staying awake a lot at night and not being able to sleep it's and horrible. having mania, that's a symptom of, of bipolar. It is. So that's it, something you need to talk with your doctor. Like It could be. You, if you're bipolar, you can't force yourself to sleep. And that's the most difficult thing is say, oh, well, I don't want to be bipolar. I want the all natural. I tried that so many fucking times. And it, it literally just disrupted everything. I would sleep. 12 hours, awake 16 to 24 hours, sleep 16, and the mania and depression would just repeat over and over. I would have this very disruptive sleep schedule, and it would make things very, very difficult because no, there's no routine at that. If you really want a routine when it comes to bipolar disorder, you really probably should be recommended to take medications with bipolar 
2 or or like uh, pseudo bipolar which is cyclo cyclical sick cyclo uh, I don't know what the hell the word is but there's something that like is almost bipolar but not quite the same definition of bipolar it's less bipolar you might be able to do the natural Systemic. but but with um bipolar type 1 and you need to describe what that is. Some people don't. Bipolar know. type one is actually more mania, more depression, higher peaks, lower valleys, and bipolar two is less peaks, lower valleys, less peaks, less lower valleys, and you mean more lower valleys. No, bipolar oh. two. Oh, so what's worse? Which one's bipolar harder? one? Oh, so that's the whole reason why with bipolar one, it's probably recommended to take medication. But anyway, Kyle cut me off. But let me reset it. Antis antipsychotics help you sleep like uh, to uh, a mood stabilizer helps you sleep like like uh, Lamictal. Another thing that could help is doxepin. Doxepin is often taken to help you sleep and to to just relax you at night to help you fall asleep. I used to take Ativan and that definitely helps you fall asleep at night. And there's other things that I tried like. Um, there's Lunesta, and there's another one that I can't think of. I tried both, but they never work for me because they just make me too drowsy. I've also tried another antipsychotic at night, like Seroquel, but that would make me sleep like 22 hours at a time, and that was nasty because I want to have a decent wake sleep schedule. I get like maybe 10 hours a day, which is a little more than necessary, but it's better than some people I know that get 12 to 15 Did you hours. used to sleep 12 and did... You get used to the meds. I right? used to sleep 12, but ever since I... I'm on the highest dose now. And of what? Of Latuda, and I'm actually not getting as much sleep. But Is that good or bad? It's okay. I mean, ever since I got off lithium because I didn't like the weight gain, and I switched to Lamecto. And it causes which, issues, though. Which doesn't... Like what? Lithium. That's why they had to get you off it. There's a certain thing that you got to be aware of. Yeah. Like what? What is it? The weight gain. No, it wasn't just weight gain. There's something else with lithium. Sweating. It's poisonous. Yeah, if you sweat too much, the, the toxic call that you test makes it. Well, they have to test your blood pressure with that all the not time. Not blood pressure. They have to test your your blood to see if there's oh. any poison, to if it's too toxic in your body, the lithium. It's a salt, but what can it cause? Does it cause liver issues or pancreas issues? It can cause any type of organ oh. issues if you're on it too long and you're at a high dose. It can be really deadly for you. But the thing is, like I stated before, think antipsychotics. Think mood stabilizer, think anti-anxiety like uh, Ativan, and think antidepressant like Doctopin. Those are the four things that I want you to consider first before you try any sleep aid like melatonin, the natural way. Sometimes it helps to eat at night. If I'm hungry, I don't fucking sleep, so I do often eat. If I don't like going to sleep on an empty stomach because it's really hard to sleep. And another thing people try is... There's melatonin, but there's also sleep medication. But the problem is with deprohydramine, which is an anti-allergy medication or sleep aid, that deprohydramine or I think that's what it you is. You tried all these? Yes. And that is a natural role, but that builds over time, and you'll have to keep taking more of that, which is why I don't recommend any sleep aid. I really feel like society has become more mentally ill, more lonely, probably because basically technology – and I really do think with all the technology and computers and lights, it probably does mess up kind of the brain a little bit. So uh, your sleep circadian rhythm. So the more people that use it during the day, they end up waking up later and that's later. Why for that's video why, gamers. That's so why I often insist. First call, world issues. This is why I often tell Kyle to quit playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Nope. Because that makes him... him awake at night too much see even work on the computer it, it's i do probably i know I'm, I'm probably speaking out of my ass but i really do believe with technology and the first world issues with more electricity and stuff and the light it, it does cause issues so another thing i wanted to mention speaking about light they do have these i want to pause it for a second okay so another thing i wanted to mention was a uv light box you have to trust me on this. I think the light bulb died, but basically it's like kind of a blue light that uh, allows you to kind of fix your circadian rhythm because in the end, sleep also relates to the sunlight. So they, according to research, they say that the more that you get sunlight, it, it uh, you, you soak in the vitamin D that kind of helps you sleep. So they recommend to get sunlight 
to kind of help you feel better and probably wake up. So this is another recommendation. They call this a UV light box. A lot of uh, therapists and psychiatrists will recommend this. I stopped using it because the trazodone really fixed me. I probably shouldn't have stopped using it, but I used to, when I wake up, I would just sit there uh, like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, let my self soak in some of the light and I would end up feeling better and it would help me sleep better. So light really does affect your ability to sleep. He's very right. You need to uh, practice good sleep hygiene, turn off your phones, turn off the yu gi -Oh's, turn off your tablets, there are turn some... off TVs, turn off basically everything. And just reading is just, there just are... reading is a, a, a lot better uh there are some it. natural things that actually help me sleep when what I do habits that I do during the day sometimes. Number one is I don't go to sleep hungry. Number two, I exercise during the day, which really helps. And number three, I do get some sunlight during the day because that essentially does help you kind of help with your circadian rhythms. And those are the three main things that you need to consider when it comes to also naturally helping your sleep. Okay, so let's summarize it up. I think that's all we have to say today. For me, I feel like for people that are, suffer from any dep for de uh, any uh, people that just suffer from depression. The irony is, I also talked about sertraline, which is antidepressant. I notice when I forget my antidepressant, I'm not able to sleep. So the antidepressant does help me sleep a little bit, but I cannot take it alone because that does not help me sleep alone. I I really feel like. The number one key factor for me that helped me sleep and change my life and allowed me to hold jobs was trazodone. And that's the number one thing I recommended. It does not, all bodies are different. And perhaps I actually recommend you guys take a gene test because there's a, a test where you could test what meds work for you. So you can ask for the, the gene test study uh, where it shows what meds uh, work with your body. It's not 100% accurate, but it could help and pinpoint. But I think trazone is the number one thing. And what about you for you, your sleep? What would you say what helped you the most? What helps the most is the antipsychotic pretty much because it uh, just knocks you all. Those antipsychotics are really the key factor when it comes to sleeping. So I know uh, Dr. K was going for the natural method, but we provided a little bit more deeper uh, look. We are a big proponent on the meds, especially when it comes to sleep. Now, there's people out there that can get on like five to six hours of sleep at four. And there's people that wake up at five in the four or five in the fucking morning. I don't know how they do it, but and they seem to do fine when they do. But this this is geared towards people that really struggle and they know sleep is not proper. They're not getting proper sleep and they know that it's it's maybe related to mental health issues. So I recommend to, to talk to your doctor. If sleep is really an issue. You can't hold jobs. You can't sleep. And you have insomnia. I recommend the medicine route. My brother probably recommends the medicine especially route, especially when you're bipolar, especially when you might have schizoaffective bipolar type, because those bipolar types it makes it impossible to do the natural. Route. And don't let people make you feel guilty of what works with your body, because in the end, I know they say that they think that you're just lazy to sleep, but hey, that wasn't my issue. I just kept on getting anxious. I couldn't sleep, and I just ended up losing more sleep. I ended up getting more, having more mental health issues, and I felt like like shit. Another I thing like that, that I never so. mentioned was socialization. I feel like getting out in a crowded area, overstimulating yourself, really tires you out at night. And that's something that I try to get benefits from going to the gym, exercising, and getting a social outlet. So those two things definitely help with sleep. Okay, so... Again, I think that's all we have to say. Is there anything else you want to add about sleep? Well, no, Dr. K, did you learn anything actually, about him? I think or? this is actually a pretty good video. I just feel like he was kind of vague since he is a psychiatrist, didn't promote any type of medication that could be useful when it comes to sleep. Okay. All right. Hopefully this, this video helps you. Again, if this video changed your life, if you can actually sleep, if you're going to talk to your doctor, please comment below and hit the subscribe and bell button for future updates. Uh, hit like and uh Stay tuned, you guys. We'll keep on posting these videos. All right. Take care. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.